So now I'm ready for part two of the lab. So in part two of this, I've got my track again, and I've got my bullet level. I also have my little ramp, which just fits right on my track. And I have the tape in the same place as it was before. Again, you'll be using masking tape. I'm using fluorescent tape so you can see it. At this point, the bag has been removed. Do not roll the marble off the track without the teacher's permission. That means you're not going to do it until you've checked, got everything set up, and you're ready for them to go for your final part of the, the roll. Because you let it go off the table one time, one time, you hit where you predict where it's going to be on the target paper. I've got a level, so now at this point, I'm going to take the level, and I'm going to see if my track is level. So for this, for the purpose of demonstrating what's going on, I'm going to put a piece of paper on here so you can see what's going on with the level. I'm also, for the sake of being able to set this up, I'm going to line this up so the edge of the track is right at the edge of the table and the sides of the track here are right at the edge of the table. So everything lines up nice and I can readjust everything and make sure it's all set up and aiming where I want it to go. Then I'll look to see if it's level. If I look at the bubble level, I can see the bubble's high on the left. That means that the left side is higher than the right side, so I'll put some paper under the back of the track to raise the back side. Top and bottom, I can see the bubble is actually a little more towards the top. So I can put some paper up here on the, on the, sorry, on the back side of it and raise the back side so I can get it level. So I can make sure this is going straight off where I'm predicting according to all my calculations. And then once I get that all set up, I'll carefully remove the level. From my calculations, I'll go through projectile motion and figure out a number. That's where the ball is going to land. So I can measure the height that it's going to fall from from the meter stick. When you're measuring the height, you want to measure to the top lip of this, of the channel. Go ahead and use that part as the height it's going to fall. It's off a little bit, but it'll be a good approximation just to measure the top of that little white channel. Then you've got to figure out how far out it goes and where to place the paper. So let's say I do my calculations and I figure out that it's going to go 44 centimeters out. So I'm going to use my meter stick, so there's zero going up to 44, and I'll use something called a plumb bob. And we've talked about this before, but here's the plumb bob and the string. So the plumb bob will go right on the edge of the ruler and go straight down to the paper. So from the plumb bob down to the paper. And what I want to do is I want to line up the paper so that the center of the paper is right there underneath the middle of the plumb bob. And you can see I got a little bit of work to do on this setup. Now I'm almost ready. I'll take a piece of carbon paper. Remember the carbon paper has a clean side and a dirty side. The dirty side goes down. And that's where I predict the ball will land. So at this point, I remove the ruler. I double check any parts of my setup I want to. Now I call the teacher. The teacher comes over. He'll check with everybody, give you the OK. And after the teacher's given you permission, this will be the first time you're allowed to roll the ball off the table. This is the first time. So I'll take the ball. I'll roll it up to my height. From here, I'll let it go down the table. And it's going to hit the paper. So when it hits the paper, I'll remove the, the paper and I can see a mark. And that's where the marble hit. That's the purpose of the carbon paper. So it's going to make a mark on the paper. And now I can see how far off I am from where I predicted it landed. Hopefully, you'll be dead on with careful measurements and good calculations.